Well, hello, Lighthouse friends. Today I want to talk with you about two very important opposites. Now, you know what an opposite is, right? Uh, two things that are not alike. In fact, they are so not alike that they are opposite of one another. So things like light and darkness. Things like rough or smooth. Things like happy or sad. Now can you think of some other opposites? If you can think of some other opposites, go ahead and uh, leave those in the comments for me. I want to see what you come up with. You can even pause the video if you want and uh, have, your, have a grown-up help you to uh, write them in the comments. Okay, so the opposites that I want to talk about today are revenge and what do you think the opposite of revenge might be? Forgiveness. Let's talk about revenge and forgiveness. Now, even though these two things are opposites, that doesn't mean they don't have some things in common. For instance, when I think of revenge and forgiveness, I notice that both of these are choices. I get to choose if I'm going to try to take revenge on somebody or if I am going to forgive them. Now let's talk for a minute about revenge. When I say revenge, what does that mean? If you take revenge on somebody, that means that you are trying to get them back for something that they did to you. Uh, it means like if somebody at school calls you a name, then you try to call them a name. Or if your little brother takes your toy away, then you punch, punch him. Taking revenge means that we want to hurt somebody for the way that they've hurt us. And do you think that's the way God wants us to act? Um, so the first similarity between revenge and forgiveness is that they, they both involve a choice. But the second is that they both come after someone has hurt us. Um, if somebody does something to us that hurts us, we get to choose whether we're going to take revenge on them or if we are going to forgive them. They all come after being hurt ourselves. Well, um, our lesson today involves uh, it involves <clears throat> a choice that Joseph has. Whether he is going to take revenge or whether he is going to forgive. So, who might... This, this is Joseph now. Remember, Joseph, uh, last week we saw him rise to the level of being second only to Pharaoh. So Joseph was basically ruling all of Egypt just under Pharaoh's authority. So Joseph has all the power in the world. He could take revenge on the cupbearer for forgetting him in prison. He could take revenge on Potiphar and Potiphar's wife for throwing him in prison. And who else might he be able to take revenge on? Well, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we're going to have another one here in a minute. Eleven, eleven men. It's going to be his brothers. And I have to do some summarization here because the story in, in the Bible is pretty long. There's several chapters. But remember, there was famine in the land. And so Pharaoh put Joseph in charge. And Joseph stored up all of the 20% uh, of the food for, for those first seven years. So that the only place in all of the, the, that area of the world that had food was Egypt. So people were coming from all, all around to buy food from Egypt. And... Israel sent his sons to buy food. They sent the sons the first time to buy food and then they came back and then they had to come back a second time and there's some other parts of the story there that are important but we want to get to the end of the story where Joseph has a choice. Okay, um, <clears throat> the second time that his brothers come uh, to buy food, Joseph has a big feast with all of them. He still hasn't told them who he is. They don't know that the person that they are dealing with as the, 
as the vizier, the governor, is actually their brother. He has a big feast with them, and then he, he packs up all their food and sends them away, except he puts his silver cup in the bag of his brother Benjamin, the youngest brother. The brother that Israel said, don't let anything happen to Benjamin, because he's the youngest. And Judah uh, had to personally tell Israel that he was going to protect Benjamin on this trip. Well, uh, Joseph sends one of his servants out to meet the brothers as they are leaving the city. And, and the servant says, somebody has stolen my master's cup. And the brothers say, none of us have done that. Search us. And if, and if you find the find the cup, then that person will, will surely die, and the rest of us will be your slaves. Well, sure enough, they find the cup in Benjamin's sack. And they bring the brothers back to the house, to Joseph's house. And they bring them before Joseph. And Benjamin is the one who is to be found guilty. Now, earlier the brothers uh, had told Joseph's servants that they didn't steal the cup, remember? And that if they did, that, that this person would die and the rest of them would be their slaves. Well, this time, someone steps up. One of the brothers steps up to save a, the young, a younger brother. You might remember the... Uh, all the way back in the beginning of Joseph's story, Reuben was the oldest. And he wanted to step up and save Joseph, but he didn't have enough uh, courage to stand against his brothers. Well, this time, one of the other older brothers, not the oldest, but this time Judah is going to step up. And Judah is the one who personally uh, vouched for and promised to protect Benjamin. And, uh, and Judah says, we will all be your slaves because he's trying to protect Benjamin's life. And he's saying, we'll all be your slaves. And Joseph says, you don't all need to be my slaves. Just the one uh, who we found the cup in his sack. And Judah says, no, take me instead. He says, uh, I promised my father that I'd bring him back, and my father is old in age, and if he finds out that uh, his youngest son, Benjamin, uh, it won't be coming back home, it's going to break his heart, and my father's going to die a miserable old man. And he said, and he even makes mention of his, his, his other brother, which was actually Joseph, uh, being gone. And at this point... Uh, jo uh, Joseph is overwhelmed with emotion. And he sees his brother being willing to sacrifice for his other brother. And in essence, uh, the brothers kind of pass the test. And Joseph comes down and gets on their level and, and, and he, 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 he tells everybody, I'm Joseph. I'm your brother that was, was, was lost. Now, all these brothers, when they find that out, they get scared. <laughs> if they weren't scared before, they're even more scared now. They're scared because they know they sold Joseph as a slave, as a little boy. They told their father he was dead. Now Joseph has all the power. And if he wants to punish them, he can. If he wants to take revenge on them, he can do that. And so they tremble with fear. But Joseph says, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold to Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here. Because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. Joseph realizes that God had been working out a big plan. 
that if Joseph wasn't there, then he wouldn't have been able to interpret Pharaoh's dream. Not Pharaoh. Pharaoh's dream. If Joseph wasn't there, he wouldn't be able to have been there to, to uh, run the administration and, and be able to provide for food. Now Joseph had a choice. His brothers caused him great pain and hurt. And he could have held it against them. He could have been still mad at them. He could have tried to make them pay. Or he could forgive them. Joseph chose to forgive. Not only that, he was able to recognize that even though his brothers did something bad to him, that God was using that hurt. Even that bad thing God was using for a very important reason. Boys and girls, this is something very important to remember this world that we live in is very tough. And people can really hurt us. And God doesn't want people to hurt us. And God doesn't cause people to hurt us. But our God is so amazing that even when other people hurt us, God is with us during that time. Just like He was with Joseph at Potiphar's house and with Joseph in jail and with Joseph in Pharaoh's court. God is so amazing. He can use the way other people hurt us to still bless us and to still bring about good. Again, He doesn't want that to happen. But He gave us the ability to choose in this life. And since sin entered the world, a lot of hurts happened. And I can promise you that people are going to hurt you. They're going to hurt your feelings. They're going to betray you. They might tell lies about you. They, they might steal from you. Think, things happen in this life. But God will be with you. He promises never to leave us or forsake us. Joseph and his story shows us that. God never left Joseph, even in the hard places. And God uses those things for his purposes. Now, later, after Joseph's dad dies, um, after Israel dies, his brothers, this is probably years later, his brothers are still worried that Joseph might be holding a grudge on them. They, they thought, well, maybe he's just not taking revenge on us because dad's around and, and he's, he doesn't want to uh, upset dad. But when their dad dies, they're afraid that Joseph's going to take revenge on them again. So they actually come to Joseph again after that, and they offer themselves and they say, we will be your slaves. Joseph had another choice. Did he want to stir up all those bad feelings of anger and bitterness and revenge? Or was he going to continue to adopt forgiveness? Well, Joseph didn't want slaves. He wanted brothers. He could have taken revenge, but if he did, he would have lost his brothers. They wouldn't be his brothers anymore. They would be his slaves. When we think about revenge and forgiveness, it's good to keep this in mind. Joseph could have had his revenge, but he would have lost brothers. He didn't want slaves. He wanted a family. And I promise you, in this life, People that you care about are going to hurt you. And you can choose to take revenge on them, but if you do, you will lose that relationship. You will have a friend do something bad to you that hurts your feelings. And if you want to take revenge on them, then you will lose that friend. But forgiveness means restoring that relationship. Forgiveness is what God gives us. We all deserve to be punished. And our sins against God deserve punishment. But Jesus paid the price of, the, of our sin on the cross. And God chooses to put aside His revenge against us so that He can save the relationship. He doesn't want slaves. He doesn't want prisoners. He wants sons and He wants daughters. 
And that's what He's done for us. So I hope that you will choose forgiveness. I hope that you will put aside your right that, that sometimes we think we have to revenge and choose to do what God did for us and to forgive and to restore the relationship. Hope you guys have a good week. God bless.